Carl Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy, classified species and subspecies based on morphology. Charles Darwin and other early evolutionary scientists followed Linnaeus's lead. Indeed, Darwin famously wrote that man's origins likely stem from Africa, given the similarities in morphology with the African apes. It was common in Darwin's time to view certain African tribes as ape-men or simian-human hybrids. Search for the ape-man. Four decades after Raymond Dart had discovered the first Australopithecine in 1924, the species was viewed as the missing link. Paleoanthropologists such as South Africans John T. Robinson and Dart's protege Philip Tobias were obsessed with finding live ape men. French explorers were particularly aggressive in searching the Congo for the mysterious ape man. Bernard Hovelmans named them the Sahiti. Anthropologist Madame Jacqueline Longuerre chronicled ape man sightings for the French National Center for Scientific Research, London Times. She documented 33 encounters with what she termed Species X. Taxonomical classification methods. The early evolutionary scientists did not have DNA to determine species classifications. They relied on morphological comparisons. They used specialized tools for cranium measurements and postcranial skeletons. Craniology was very popular for a time in evolutionary science circles. South Africa's Raymond Dart, Robert Broom, and Philip Tobias used craniology as a basis for their science of racial typology. Broom, an eccentric medical doctor, would boil heads of deceased African tribesmen in his kitchen to get fresh skulls for his measurements. But by the 1980s, the science of craniology had been relegated to museum displays. Though some paleoanthropologists, notably Chris Stringer, still relied heavily on measurements. Classifying human populations by cranium size lost favor. It was seen as insensitive to indigenous populations and even racist in some quarters. One unit of measurement survived on in the field of paleoanthropology despite its ties to race science. Humoral Femoral Index Smithsonian the humeral femoral index is a measure comparing arm length to leg length. Continuing, modern apes and chimpanzees have arms and legs that are almost the same size in length, giving them a humeral femoral index of about 100. Tim White's Artipithecus ramidus, 4.4 million years ago, which preceded the Australopithecines, has a very chimp-like humoral to femoral ratio. Chimps and gorillas at 100, Australopithecus afarensis lucy at 85, modern humans at 69. Gibbons are at a striking 130 HF. 
Humoral femoral ratios became the standard within paleoanthropology research in the 1970s and 80s. HF measurements were the basis for intense discussions and debates in paleoanthropology such as Homo habilis and the various Australopithecines. Cryptozoologist John Napier, anatomist Owen Lovejoy, and South Africa professor John Robertson were considered the go-to guys in the field. It was Lovejoy, Don Johansson's friend from Kent State, who gave the final declaration that Lucy was a separate hominid based largely on humoral femoral. More recently, Professor Lee Berger of the University of Witwatersrand has relied heavily on humoral femoral measurements with both Australopithecus sediba and Homo naledi. Afropygmies A study was released in 2016, The Evolution of Body Size and Shape in the Human Career. William Jungers, co-authors Mark Grabowski, Kevin Hatala, and Brian Richmond. Stony Brook professor Jungers was considered the worldwide expert on the Hobbit, Homo floresiensis. He received a great deal of media attention for his work on the Hobbits. Abstract. Body size is a fundamental biological property of organisms, and documenting body size variation in hominid evolution is an important goal of paleoanthropology. Jungers and his fellow researchers go on to document how Afropygmy's morphology is similar to the Australopithecines and other archaic hominids. From the study, a surprisingly large percentage of early fossil hominids are small body, most fit within the known range of variation of modern human pygmies from Africa. Quote, a large percentage of hominids are small bodied and fit within the known range of modern human pygmies from Africa, end quote. Continuing, our findings suggest that the earliest members of our clade were small-bodied at the lower end of the range of modern human pygmies from Africa. Humoral femoral index for African pygmies, 73.5%. Table 3 from the study, Humoral femoral index lists an HF ratio for African pygmies at 73.5%. The only other human population that has an HF index even approaching the pygmies are the Khoisan with a score of 70.5%. As mentioned in a previous frame, all other modern humans are at 69 or 70 HF index. African pygmies are an extreme outlier at 73.5%. The Jungers data thus confirms what the French explorers and other colonialists had suspected all along. African ape men do indeed exist. Junger and his team also measured body mass and stature. They then proposed a stunning hypothesis. African pygmies Modern Homo the Lady? Study. Our surprisingly consistent finding is that many fossil hominids fall within the range of human pygmy body masses. We can compare how much mass they packed onto their skeletal frame to living pygmies. They use a formula relying on calibrations with femoral lengths in human pygmies. Out of eight archaic hominids, they found five fall within the range of pygmies. Study. Our results indicate that Homo naledi is characterized by body masses within the observed range of modern human pygmies. They go on to conclude, Homo naledi would appear to be similar to modern human pygmies in absolute and relative terms. Homo the Lady discoverer Lee Berger has hinted at a connection between certain African populations and Homo the Lady in media appearances. He has even used the term Species X. Dr. Berger holds the title of Philip Tobias Chair of 
the Evolutionary Department at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Martha Christina, a genetics researcher in South Africa, agrees, quote, pygmies could well be a modern homo naledi, or at least have significant homo naledi admixture, end quote. Quote, pygmies are the only human group whose characteristics are distinct and sharp-edged enough that they might possibly qualify them as a subspecies, end quote. Claire Jordan, biologist, University of Edinburgh. Stanislav Dobrzewski, a professor at Moscow State University, has been called Russia's most famous anthropologist. He has worked with Lee Berger on researching Homo naledi. Dobrzewski, quoted in Newsbreezer, calls Homo naledi, quote, half ape, half man, end quote. He continues, naledi has, quote, very primitive aspects like the brain, end quote. He adds, quote, in fact, the genome of some African peoples, such as the pygmies, have not been explained so far. End quote. We lost two magnificent paleoanthropologists in 2023, Dr. William Jungers and Professor William Kimball. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and make sure to pass this video on to others. There's much more to come. Bye.